Why is it every time I start a project, this place is trashed? I, I don't even think anyone's been in here and the door's been ripped off? Okay, time to use my advanced craftsman knowledge. Eh, that's fine. After cleaning up, it was time to start building. I found this lovely bowl cut maple piece of wood and I also had some maple boards and some paduk wood lying around. So with that, it was time to try and cut a hole directly through a five inch solid piece of maple with a tiny worn drill bit and some hand saws. I'm sure this won't take longer than five minutes. What could possibly go wrong? After spending about four hours trying to drill into this, this is the progress I'd made. Nothing. After finally drilling my first hole, after a minimal amount of time, it was time to start cutting by hand. My first plan was to drill holes around the centre and then using a coping saw cut around the whole thing. You know, looking back at this, I'm not sure why I thought a coping saw had the power of a lightsaber, but this tiny, microscopic cut took about an hour. I needed to come up with a new plan. Before drilling, I quickly measured out the width of the planks of wood against the maple bowl and started chiselling it down, and I also used a router for this. I decided to use the paduke wood, as this is what tends to be used in a lot of percussive instruments, and I also think it looks absolutely stunning, especially when finished with linseed oil. Paduke wood is what most marimbas and other percussive instruments are made out of. Alright, here we go, this is working really well and I have to figure out how to cut it out but I'm sure nothing can go wrong here and finally something is going right and my drill is stuck in the wood. After trying many delicate and subtle methods of removing the drill bit I'd stuck in the wood, I decided the best course of action is just to see if I can drill it out. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure this will be fine and, you know, come to think of it, aren't you meant to clamp stuff down before you... I'd managed to spend approximately three days on this and all I'd managed to do is get my drill stuck in a piece of wood. My confidence at this point was somewhat on the low side. With the drill bit still truly one with the maple bowl, I decided the best course of action is to saw around it. I grabbed a jigsaw and I brought a very long blade and started cutting. Eventually, and believe me the key word there was eventually, I managed to hollow out the bowl. I'd spent about a week and I just barely managed to cut a very loose hole in a piece of wood. If you were to call me incompetent and hopeless, your argument might have some merit. A cajon is a widely popular hand wooden drum originating from Peru. It's a box shape and allows performers to sit on it, although they do come in all shapes and sizes. This project is inspired by wooden drums and cajons in general. It does deviate in design and also in playing methods, as you'll see later on in this video. I suppose a more broad term is wooden drum that fits this particular project a bit better. I have one that was built in Spain by a company called Lindo and although I've used it in a lot of songs to give the drums a lovely live texture and layer, it also shines massively as a footstool. Cajons are simple in nature and I've seen them made out of pretty much any and all wood. My one here is made out of an ebony front and a maple back and sides. after many, many days, I had finally cut the initial hole shape directly out of the centre of the maple bowl. I now needed to expand this hole to a suitable size. This was achieved with a lot of chiselling, sawing and filing.
At this point, I have carved out a hollow and cut the shape that a Paduk board can now fit in. And it's now time in which I must reveal something to you all. It is with great shame that I must in fact admit this. But originally, this project was not in fact meant to be a cajon or wood drum. This project was originally intended to be a tong drum. Sometimes when you try something new, you end up failing and also leaving a maple bowl sized shaped dent in your father's wall that he didn't actually notice until I just said that right there. Sometimes you find out why things aren't certain shapes only after you rip the wood to shreds. So I think the issue with the tong drum was that I didn't quite leave enough space for the actual playing service to resonate and produce a pitched tone. Uh, they were all clamped together and I couldn't really get the sizing right on the actual tongs on the playing surface. I suppose there's a reason why they're normally three times the size and also box shape. But I guess I just need to move on from this failure. So time went on. I moved into my first house. I launched the biggest project of my career and I traveled the world, but I never quite forgot my wooden drum. Why don't I just turn it into a cajon? So I set up a new workbench in the back of my house and it was time to salvage this project from the depths of despair. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, hit it with hammers and chisels until something happens. I cleared up the wood so that the face of the drum would slot into it and after a lot of sanding, chiseling and filing, it looked like this. I then took a fresh piece of paduk wood and was absolutely determined to not ruin this one like I did the previous piece. I cut it to half the thickness. These two pieces would act as the back and front of my drum. I made one side slightly thicker, as I thought this would be cool to have a drum that had two hit surfaces that gave off a slightly different timbre. I wasn't sure how this would work in actual reality, but thought at the very minimum, it would look cool. Sawing this by hand was also a slightly tiring endeavor, but we got there in the end, eventually. With the two pieces of paduk wood cut to the correct length, I cut another hollow similar to the one I had done earlier. I intentionally faced it the other way around as an artistic choice and something I did intentionally because I think it looks really cool and not because I accidentally did it the wrong way like a complete idiot. So anyway, with that roughly taking shape, it was time to place two holes on the side of the drum. I started by using a round saw blade attachment to cut the hole, but nope, okay, that didn't work at all. Let's go back to my old fateful giant drill bit. These would work as sound holes for the hits, but also as striking points to get a bassy hit out of the drum. I did two holes as it seemed to work really well, but didn't have much projection with just one. I guess I'm taking this inspiration slightly from, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, gourd drums. So after drilling three holes with the giant drill bit, I then cut that out with a jigsaw. With all that done, it was time to finish off the bottom part of the body so that I can slot the second piece of wood in. After an array of tools, it was finally complete and looking something like this. With that, I cut the wood to fit in and then it was time to glue it all together and use a very advanced and ingenious way of applying pressure to the wood so the glue sets. I also used a tiny, tiny amount of wood filler. I, I'm not even sure you guys would even notice it if I didn't point it out to you. But the drum was finally starting to take shape. It was time for a lot, and I mean a lot, of sanding. After questioning my life decision of deciding to do this when it was 40 degrees and the hottest day ever recorded in England, I also decided to expand the holes on the side. It should make it project a bit more and be a bit more bassy. 
It didn't sound overly good at this point, but I thought with expanding the holes I might be able to get the tone I was looking for. Or that was at least the idea. After that, it was time to sort all the edges out and smooth everything out. And you guessed it, a lot more sanding. It was starting to get there, and this is what I ended up with. After some last minute cosmetic changes and messing around with the size of the side holes based on what it sounded like, it was finally time to clean it up and apply the wood finish. The wood finish I normally go for on all these projects is natural boiled linseed oil. This doesn't contain the heavy metal and potentially harmful additives that they put in the non-natural or organic version of this oil, but the trade-off on this is that it does take about a week to set on the wood. I think it gives a lovely finish and with this, the project was finally complete.